Hi, uh, my name is Sean Chen. I'm a postdoc uh, of here in a class. I am working on the CMS experiment, and I'm in the lab, and where I'm working on the like thermal validation for the D of the CMS TFPIX project. So welcome to my lab. So as you might know, the CMS detector is this gigantic monster, like 14,000 ton, five storage tall. But what we're building is a heart of the CMS detector. Our detector is a silicon semiconducting sensor. So ideally, when there's nothing going through, it acting as an insulator, no current going through. Mm -hmm. But then when the particle passing through, it gets sucked out on one end. So it's like, oh, there's a signal, there's a particle. We need to make sure, okay, actually, the, it act, first, it acts safely under the high voltage, and second, it like, behaves the way how we expect them to behave. And this is more like just a playground for us to learn, like, okay, how is this module now? Because it's like keep evolving and they're different design. And we in charge for all the charged particle. Mm -hmm. Doesn't matter what is electron or like hydron or, or, or like quark or anything, like it just going through. Like we record every single particle that has a charge. I cannot think of a single CMS analysis that doesn't need a checker. Wow, so you're literally the heart yeah. of it. Our job in this lab is to qualify to make sure all, first we have a good understanding about how the modules work. And second of all, once we enter the production phase, every single module we receive from other institution, we need to like put down, before we install them on the real detector, we make sure it's still good and like the, all the shipping does not like damage anything. Cause the whole TFPIX is uh, a huge collaboration within the US. It's built by like, I don't know the exact number, but so many different institutions. So all the other institutions were making the module and they will send it to us. We put it all together before we ship them to CERN. So yeah, there are some pictures uh, made by our summer students, posts are made by our summer students to show, yeah, this is like where the collision point is. That's where all the particles collide and that's, this is a part of what we are building. The giant monster of the CMS, we are here. Wow, and just in that inner. <laughs> it's just like region. bullseye. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, this is the Gantry Lab where we build the, put the module together and build the D. Like now you saw the module. We need to put them together, right? Because mm -hmm. CMS is not just like a bunch of floating modules. You have 800 of them to yeah. put together. Yeah, yeah. so the, the way how we work is we put something we called, well, it's, in, it's funny, we call this thing a D, even though it looks like C to me. Don't ask me why, I'm not gonna American English alphabet, but that looks like a C to me. But we, th this is what we call a D. The module needs to live on something. Mm -hmm. And so, but how can we make it most efficient to dis distribute the heat from the module to the coolant? The way how we did it is like, we're building this D structure is basically a carbon fiber, carbon foam sandwich. And the reason why we choose a carbon fiber, carbon foam choice is, first we need something that has extremely good heat conductivity, right? We need to cool the module down. And also at the same time, we're so close to the interaction point. We want all our particle interact with our detector module so we can see, oh, here you are. But if it hits like other supporting structure, the particle might just right. decide to deposit their energy there or just like hang out there. So we want to have something as low, like as light as possible. So the particle say, ah, oh, this is boring. I don't, I don't care. Let me just pass through, let me just pass through. Wow. That's why we need to use a carbon because it has a really low Z number. Also, how do we attach them together? How right. do we glue them together? A challenge we're facing is like, first important, we need to be able to cool down the detector. So it needs to have a good thermal connectivity. But also at the same time, it needs to stay intact. Um, is we cannot just use any glue because, like I said, we're dealing with the radiation. So we need to think about how do we put the D together and how do we put the module on the D and all this thing. And as you can see here, that might look like more like a chemistry lab than a physics lab. Yeah, sure. So the students are doing a lot of like uh, R&D tasks to think about how do we do it. Like the solution we come up with is to glue, we use diamond. I was always joking with my friend, Diamond's the girl's best friend. Because we realize diamond is such a perfect material because it, it's basically carbon, so it's really light, but it has extremely great thermal conductivity. So what we do is we finding a epoxy glue that is, can survive the radiation. We mix the diamond in. I don't know how many people work with like, I would say 5,000 cars diamond. They just- Wow. This is 
is a diamond, so we use to slide the carbon foam. Because when we get the carbon foam, it's like in a giant chunk. We actually slice them, all the carbon foam for the whole inner tracker project. Because like, we have to buy them in bulk and they're, you know, really light. We slice them to thin slice and then we send to machine shop for them to make those grooves. And this is all done here at Newman? Yes. And also we have this like fancy 3D printer to print out parts to hold the D together. And we're testing different like structure and way. And those are the like radiation hard plastic. So what I'm holding now is what we call the cartridges. So a cartridges has two sides of D. And so we oopsie, we have the module on the side, on the center, on the on both sides of the D, both this one and this one on, and also on both D. And then we will have what we call the port car, like a readout system on the rim of this cartridges. So then the data take like a uh, take from the module, get regrouped outside the the uh, outside the cartridges and then send forward. If we have extremely rainy day in Ithaca, we had to stop because we cannot, if it cool too much, it's gonna start have condensation, the humidity will be too high. And then we don't wanna drown the module because they're like electrically connected. So we don't wanna drown them. But what we are building this like is a co box then you can have a better environmental control. And so then we can like, we don't need to worry about them. We don't have to check the virus every day to do mm -hmm. a test inside, which is yeah. kind of funny. And Carl Smolensky is building all the like co box, not just for Cornell, but also all the other US institutions on this okay. project who are involved in module testing. Yeah. So yeah, you can see his like action case. Carl Smolensky is a like project like uh, engineer. And also we are closely working with a lot of other like engineers and machine shops. Like for example, like we, a lot of parts we are heavily rely on like the machine shop. And also Scout the drafter helped us make this like a code box. And also we have the CO2 genius, Dan, Kobe and uh, Michael, they are the people who actually get it running. Mm -hmm. and, and they're also like a genius. They, they just like a genie. Like I make a wish, say, okay, I want to do this test. Can you please help me? And they said, okay, what need to do? Like for example, they help us to also upgrade the code box. Now we're entering the thermal testing side. Okay. Like, like we said, we can build a D, but we can never know if it's gonna work unless we give it a try. So since we have the CO2 plan here, so that's where the thermal test is going to happen. We have already done a lot of tests at the room temperature with a chiller but now we're entering with the real deal, like the CO2. The idea is we will have a, we will be able to test a whole D mm. inside this cold box. And we also have a nitrogen line to control the, the humidity. And also we have a line to cool the cold box itself. And we have so many different power supplies and trying to just like get it working. We use the summer camera, then it has a view of all the D. So like the advantage for using infrared image is then we can not only monitor the temperature of the module, we can monitor the temperature of the D because the carbon fiber is so good at thermal connecting. We want it to go perpendicularly directly to the pipe, but they will also heat out the neighbors. Like how much does it, it's, it's such a complicated formula, but we want to gather as many information, as much information as possible. So we need to take as many data as possible, as much information as possible. While well, I was working on the last generation of the pixel detector, people have already started doing the, like, the R&D for this detector. Like I think I met Professor Julia Toms like back at Firm Lab when I was working on the phase one and she was having a workshop about the phase two. Like I said, okay, people have to plan ahead. And when will that be taking data? That's a really good question. Hopefully sometime, like not that many years, but I think that's the goal we're aiming for.